So it is Saturday, which means we get another fun video, this time on the Wheel of Time, which should be the last Wheel of Time video for a while. I'm going to wrap up my thoughts on, like, pre-television show of what they should keep, definitely keep from the books going into the TV show. So I outlined um, in a previous video why I thought the controversy over having mixed-race people in in, Ed, in Edmonds Field is ridiculous. Um, so... You know, the races of characters you don't need to keep, uh, with the one caveat, because it's the keep video, there is only one character in the Wheel of Time where I actually feel like the race is actually important to the character, and that's Lanfear. Every other character, okay, maybe Simraj, because it, but like, she's so minor, it doesn't matter. But every other character, it really doesn't matter, black, white, in between. Um, as long as, like, if you cast Michael B. Jordan, fine, but, like, don't then cast Paul Giamatti to play his dad, right? So, like, keep it reasonable. Um, what they do need to keep, though, I brought this up, is what should be kept is the sexes or genders of the characters and the cultures that they embody. Um, now, the sexes, for anyone who's read the series, is obvious. The, the, the two halves of the power, male and female. One of the main themes of the whole thing is what would happen in sort of a medieval Renaissance society, magically based, but where women actually had this ultimate power of them and how would that affect the dynamic. It's, it's a very important part of the world. You know, you can't make Elaine a boy. You can't make Gawain a girl. Like, you can't switch those. It ruins the whole story. Cultures are also very, very important because this is one of the best things about the Wheel of Time is just how, how much you learn about each different culture. Um, you know, Saldean should be crazy. Um, you know, that, that was one of my favorite parts of like book seven, underrated, is when Perrin uses his wolf senses and he's meeting Fael's family and like his mom, his mother, new mother-in-law is just absolutely insane, but he can like smell her emotions that she's thinking. It's just how alien it is. I, actually, I, I love those parts of the Wheel of Time. So on this cultural element, one of the most important cultures for them to sort of get right and expand and expand on is the Aiel. I mean, other than like two rivers, of course. Um, but the Aiel, fascinating and and really worth getting into. So a scene they cannot cut, in my opinion, is the Rodion scene that ran going through Rodion um, and experiencing sort of the history of the Aiel. Uh, I think that is way too integral to the story of Aiel and how Rand plays off them and the sort of the breaking the Aiel, it, it has to sort of make sense. And it's a great way to sort of explore that culture. And it's, it's also, I mean, it's one of my favorite scenes in the book. It, it's also from the best book. Objectively, book four um, is the best book. But um, that scene where you just keep going further and further and further back in time as like your descendants within the Aiel. Um, and then it, I mean, I didn't even hate, I didn't hate the Shadow plot as much as everyone else did. I know it drags on too long. Um, and like book 10 didn't need to happen. Uh, but I actually think the Shido plot is actually fine, especially if you streamline it in a television series. I mean, Perrin has to do something. Um, so I actually don't mind uh, that plot line so much. Plus, book five, the Shido plot line when Matt becomes a general. Great. Um, okay, another thing they have to keep. Um, this is more uh, personally, but Egwene's the best character um, by the end of it. And everyone who thinks she's a Mary Sue is wrong. Uh, and they have to keep Egwene being a tank. There are two of, two of the top ten Wheel of Time moments um, I can think of off the top of my head. Uh, evolve Elaine, uh, sorry, Egwene being an absolute tank and a great person and and someone we should all all, all love and respect. Uh, and these two moments that, that they have to keep, one, this they'll, they'll obviously keep, but sort of Egwene rallying the novices and holding off the Shan Shan. It's not a Mary Sue moment. It makes perfect sense. That she knows she's captured by the Shan Shan before. She knows they can't link, right, because of the Adam and such. So she gets all the novices into a circle, right? She finds the most powerful weapon. She immediately knows they're under attack. She doesn't have all of these politics. She rallies defense force and uses the fact that she can link in circles and they can use Sarangrel to actually fight off the, the, the Shan Shan who are better fighters, but she realizes that if they all link Link together in powerful circles, they, 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 like, again, they wouldn't be able to cut her off from the source. Their, their increased battle tactics could be used against them. That has to be kept. That probably will be kept. Uh, one of the scenes that is less people talk about is one of the best scenes in the Wheel of Time book is when Egwene confronts Elida and, like, just gets beat with the power, but in, but just holds her ground and has that moment of, like, yeah, when Elida goes, like, this is what defying me looks like. And she goes, what? And she's just, like, standing there bleeding, looking at her. Just an absolute tank and why everyone should love Egwene. And anyone who says um, Egwene doesn't know what she's doing and she gets lucky or she's a Mary Sue. Um, I'm not saying you're wrong, but you should be deported. Uh, right. So after we deport uh, the Unbelievers, uh, another scene that absolutely has to be in there, and I think everyone agrees, is if they cut Nynaeve's scene near the end of the book, the Golden Crane Flies for Time or God in scene, um, there should be riots in the streets. Someone should die. Um, not advocating violence, but if violence happens, you know, say la vie. No, uh, seriously, the, the, the scene where Nynaeve rallies the people at the inn and they, the golden crane flies for time of God in, um, if that isn't the last scene of the penultimate season, someone failed. Some, someone, someone didn't read the books. Someone's not doing the job right. Um, that is the most 
sort of emotionally impactful scene and the probably the easiest of all these great Wheel of Time moments to actually adapt to the screen. I think, I mean, with all the character arc you'd have with Nynaeve, I think that could be very easily adapted to the screen. I mean, some of the parent stuff is hard, hard to adapt because it's part of what like parent stuff is like he's using his wolf senses to like, oh, this person smells nervous, right? That's a bit harder. So I give some leeway there. But if you can't get this Nynaeve stuff right, you know, fail. F minus. Um, and final thing that, that I have to keep is, I'll just say this is why I want to see boobs in the Wheel of Time. Not that I, like I really care about the nudity. I, I honestly don't. I mean, if you want to see boobs, go to the internet, type in Google, type in boobs. There's there's a whole place dedicated to it. But I want to see the R rating because the Battle of Dumai's Wells needs to be uncomfortable to watch. And this is sort of why I say the boobs thing. I'm getting there by circular logic. But it has to be rated R. Now, a lot of the story is, you know, sort of 14A, we can say. I mean, a lot of the more gruesome stuff is alluded to. And I'm okay with, you know, you know blood not splattering all over the place most of the time. But Do My As Wells sort of changes the book. And, and, and complete spoilers, stop watching if you, if you haven't read the end of book six. But Do My As Wells is when male channelers first hit the battlefield. And they break the Shido who are ill. You have to, like, the Do My As Wells needs to be sort of, right? People are just vomiting after the after the battle. Parents, like, shell-shocked, um, you know... You know, Rand's a bit crazy at the moment because he's just been freed. But, like, you know, someone needs to have a bit of an Oppenheimer moment at Doom Wells. Like, that's sort of what Doom Wells is. It's sort of the nukes being dropped in this world. Like, everything's different because for the longest time, like, the, I, I, I said I have this, we don't channel in battle unless our lives are in danger. Like, we fight Trollocs, but we don't we don't use the power as a weapon. Like, that's their whole thing, right? So it's not used, the power hasn't been used as a weapon for thousands of years. Outside the Shantian, but they're dicks. Now, the male channels are even stronger. So, I mean, just... One of the things I, I actually scouted is I watched the boy series on Amazon and it was pretty gory. Like the, they just like explode people and it's – that needs to happen at Dumai's Wells. Like ranks of men need to just explode and to a point where everyone there realizes that, okay, the stakes are now up. Like this is the end game. You know, all cards are on the table. You know, this is what we are going to be facing going forward is male channelers on both sides of the battle. Um, so the powers now free game, like the, the, the weapon, ne- weaponry in this society, you know, it, it's gone from here to here in the span of 15 minutes and everyone has to deal with that. And that's such an important moment in the series that this is really why the series needs an R rating. Again, I don't care if there's boobs or not. I, I really don't. Um, again, you can find new DS elsewhere. Um, but the nudity will signal that Do My As Wells is actually going to happen properly. So if there is no nudity and Do My As Wells is hoary and, grif- and, and uh, gory and, and, and terrible, I'll be happy. I think that's a much better compromise than seeing nudity and not in Do My As Wells. If the, but if there, if there is nudity and then Do My As Wells is pretty tame, I'm going to be pissed. Because then what's the point? What's the point? I mean, again, oh, you don't want to see pretty girls naked? Everyone does. It's on the internet. Go look it up. Stop watching this video. Go look up naked women. They're there. Or unless you're under 18, in which case it doesn't exist, n- never mind. Um, do your homework. Do your homework right now. All right, so that's going to get me in trouble. Um, I really wish sports was on so we could, like, stagger these Saturday videos. Like, sports, random nerdy books. Sports, random nerdy books. Um, I have one more Green Bay Packers draft rant in me, and that's going to be next week. We're going to learn about why the Packers don't have a slot receiver and why it's driving me insane. Uh, and then we'll move on to another book, maybe Mistborn, Stormlight Archive. I'll save Stormlight Archive stuff before the fourth book comes out because that's the best series of all time. So maybe something about Mistborn. I'm reading Lightbringer right now. Really like it after the first two books, but can't get the third one from Amazon or Chapters. Damn you. Damn you all. So if you're here for the fun stuff, see you next Saturday. And if you're here for me ranting at the government, probably see you later tonight because there's a few rants I'm behind on. All right.